September 30th, 1966. I'm marrying my high school sweetheart, Fred Miller. We're standing under the hookah. The ceremony is long, and it's in Yiddish. We don't understand one word of it. But then finally, the words we're waiting to hear, the rabbi says, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Fred, you may kiss Mrs. Miller. And Fred turns and kisses his mother. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sign. <laughs> Not a good sign. Uh, well, not a good sign. Five years later, 1971, I'm 23 years old and I have two children. I have a beautiful little girl named Amy who is two years old and I have a husband, Fred, who is two years old. <laughs> it is the height of the woman's movement, and I get caught up in the excitement and the waves of it, and I decide, along with hundreds of other women, to go back to school, redefine myself, find out who I am. We bring our children with us because nobody had childcare. So my classes at Brooklyn College are filled with nursing mothers who are taking notes, and cranky toddlers that the professor is trying to speak over and I keep Amy in my backpack uh, like a little baby backpack and I kind of wiggle all day feeding her pretzels so that I can hear the lecture. At some point we form a group and we go to the administration and we ask them for a room so we could create a daycare center and uh, reluctantly they give us one. So you know, we bring cots and cribs and toys and stories and uh, dolls and games and we create a schedule and in between classes we quickly run over to the center, we hug a, a baby, we, we feed them, we make lunch, we play with them, wipe a tear. And slowly, slowly women are finding their way to us, women who don't have children. And we gradually become something more than a childcare center. We become a center for women. And somewhere mid-year, the administration wanted the room back. So a small group of us, it was a cold, cold January morning, a small group of us, we stuck pillows underneath our clothing and we carried signs and we walked about around screaming, we've been fucked by the administration! We've been fucked by the administration! And it became, you know, we started out this small group, but by the end of the day, there were all the students, I mean so many students from the college, the pillows under their clothing shouting, we've been fucked by the administration. Men too, all the male students were really involved as well and the administration uh, gave us back our room and that became the Brooklyn College Daycare Center. <laughs> My friend Sally organized a women's consciousness raising group and every Wednesday about 20 of us would sit cross-legged on her living room rug and we all looked exactly the same. We were wearing you know, blue denim overalls, white t-shirts, beige work shoes. We actually looked like some kind of prison chain gang. <laughs> and we would share a joint, and we would laugh, we would cry, we would confess our sins, and we would give advice. And the advice went something like this. A woman might say, God, you know, my boyfriend wants me out of these overalls. He wants me to wear something sexy, put some makeup on. And we would say, leave him. <laughs> or someone might say, my husband just doesn't want to cuddle, he just wants sex, leave him. <laughs> there should have been a sign on the door, like if you enter this room with a man, you're going to leave without that man, unless that man is your son. <laughs> uh, the book Our Bodies Ourselves had just come out, we, we would pour over it like it was like some great big sex novel. We really love the same words like, you know, ovaries and fallopian tubes. <laughs> but it was at one of these meetings that I met Mona. I liked her right away. She had auburn, kind of reddish hair to her shoulders, big blue gray eyes, and she had style because her overalls, she had embroidered them with little <laughs> tiny red and yellow flowers hanging on these green zagging vines. And she 
was really cool. She smoked Benson and Hedges. And she had this way of tapping her cigarette and going, well, I think that's bullshit. I loved the way she said bullshit. I thought she was so sexy. After six months in uh, Sally's group, my marriage ended. And so did Mona's marriage. We lived in Park Slope, very close to each other. Mona had a daughter named Ingrid, who was exactly the same age as my daughter Amy. And so we became friends, and we began to depend on each other. If she needed help with Ingrid, I was always there. And if I needed help with Amy, she was always there. A natural rhythm formed. We shopped together and cooked together, did laundry together. We laughed all the time, and we talked constantly. And when I wasn't with her, there was always something I just couldn't wait to tell her. But we had one big disagreement. What our daughters, what we all, called our vaginas. Because Amy and I called our vagina a vagina. And Mona thought that was way too clinical. But Ingrid and Mona called their vagina a snatch, which drove me totally crazy. So we decided we had to change the names of the vaginas. And we decided on pussy, but that was before we knew anything about Trump. <laughs> the thing is, though, the girls could not make the transition. So Amy would say, my pussy vagina. And Amy would say, my pussy snatch. It was like, now the vaginas had two names. Kind of like Jean Levesque or John Doe. But one evening, one evening we got babysitters. And we went to see the movie Cabaret. And after the movie, we were sitting in front of my apartment building in Mona's car. And you know, we're talking about the movie. We're singing, you know, money makes the world go round, the world go round. When Mona looked at me and she said, geez, you know, I really feel like kissing you. So I said, well, kiss me, baby. And she kissed me. And it was like, it was like, this kiss, it was like butterflies were in my mouth. It was like Frank Sinatra songs, ta-da, and sunsets. And I, I ran out of the car and I ran into my apartment. I paced the kitchen floor thinking, oh God, feel the same way. Call me, feel the same way. And the phone rang and I grabbed the phone. Then Mona said, Jean, and I said, Mona. And we just held on to the phone and I slipped down my kitchen wall, landing on the cold linoleum knees to chin, going, Mona? And she said, Jean? And so we became lovers. But we had absolutely no idea what to do without a penis. <laughs> really, so if you can kind of imagine, like, little kittens kind of like nipping and licking and rolling and nipping and rolling and licking and nipping. And, but, one night, Mona put on Carol King and she lit candles. <laughs> and to the song, You've Got a Friend, Mona found her way past my pussy snatch vagina to this whole other place. And I came like for the first time in my life. Oh, wow. Yes, say yes. yes. Yay! Yay! Before going to sleep that night, Mona said, and you know, sweetie, you could do this to yourself anytime you like. Well, I woke up the next morning with this newfound power, and I worked at a daycare center just about six blocks from my house and had a 45-minute lunch hour. So every single day, the moment it was lunch. I ran those six blocks and I hoped the elevator wouldn't get stuck on some godforsaken floor and I would throw myself into the house and I would masturbate. Now I masturbated on my bed and in front of a mirror with clothes on, with clothes off. And one afternoon, just as I was about to make my escape, I am surrounded by about four of my colleagues. And I go, no, 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 you are not going anywhere. Where are you going? And they kind of, it was like kind of like a celebrity intervention. You know, they surrounded me and they ushered me 
into this empty classroom where we're sitting on these tiny little chairs and Pauline was the spokeswoman and she said, where are you going? You know, you miss Neil's birthday party. You used to eat lunch with us every day. Now you leave the moment it's lunch and you come back looking really weird. Are, are you mad at us? And I was like, you know, I had this newfound power, so I was, I was like, no. And she's like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going home and I'm masturbating. And she was like, you go home every single day and you masturbate. And I said, yes, I go home every day and masturbate. And she said, holy shit, every day. I'm like, every day. I said, but look, tomorrow I'm, I'm, I'm having lunch with you, not going home. And Pauline was like, ha ha, you're not having lunch with me. Tomorrow I'm going home and I'm masturbating. <laughs> Mona and I were together for five years when one evening, over dinner and a bottle of wine, maybe it was two bottles of wine, two and a half bottles of wine, two and a half bottles of wine, <laughs> she said, I want to move to Maine. Now, this didn't come as a surprise to me because Mona's family had land in Maine, and Mona always wanted to go back to the land. There were two movements going on at that time. It was the women's movement and going back to the land to live in a commune and to grow vegetables and poop in an outhouse. And Mona really wanted to do that. She, wanted to, she, she had been building a cabin, and she wanted to move into this cabin and poop in an outhouse. And she said, come with me. And I said, I can't. And she said, that's bullshit. And I said, I can't. I said, I can't poop in an outhouse. And she said, I'll make it beautiful. It'll be the most beautiful outhouse. But she knew I couldn't go. I was uh, graduating from Brooklyn College as an education major. I had a job waiting for me. And living off the land wasn't my thing. And the thing about my love for Mona is we supported each other. We never, ever questioned our love. It was a gift. And so it was time to let each other go. And we never thought we really would, though. I mean, it was two years of writing letters. She would come to New York. I would go to Maine. But every time we said goodbye, it was this anguish. And finally, just as distance happens and the years happen, we melted away from each other. And it was 40 years. And I wanted to write this story, and I wanted to find her and ask her permission to put her name in the story, and I, I found her on Facebook. <laughs> and we made this uh, date, that we would have this telephone date, and I was really, really, really nervous. And so I called her up, and she said, Jean, and I said, Mona, and we started laughing. And in that moment, I was that very, very, very young girl who slid down her kitchen wall holding a butterfly kiss and she was wearing embroidered overalls. Thank you. <laughs>